So now, when we talk about uh, map reduce joint, there is a very good article on the Edureka blog that we have kept over here. So if you click on this article, you would see that uh, there is a section on the normal join in hive that we have versus the map reduce join that we have. So uh, this is what would be very much helpful for you to understand. So you'll have to go through and read these things, guys, okay? So please have a look at this. This is what would be helpful to you. Cool. Let me move on. So the slide that we are talking about joins over here is from something called as a map side join. So what is a map side join is we will be talking about this in our distributed cache. Remember, there is a uh, code on distributed cache. So what do you mean by cache? Something is being cached, right? So what is typically cached is the small table data. Okay, that is what is being cached in your distributed cache so that at the mapper time, you will go through the actual records. The big data table, what you are seeing is what is where all the records would be. Okay? Uh, all the small data table is what would be compressed and archived and will be there in the cache. Look at the arrow. Okay? The small data table will be used in my local task. It will read from the hash file. From where is the hash file coming in from? It's coming in from the cache. Okay, so that at the time when I am uh, doing my mapping, it will look at the distributed cache and it will look at my record, do a join, and then give me an output. Think of this example. You want to join, uh, let me open up Notepad and explain that to you. Let's say you wanted to join, you wanted to get the customer and the, cust uh, sorry, the employee name and the department name from the DPT table. My use case is I want to get the employee name and the department name. What is the tables that we have here? We have got a EMP table in Oracle. Okay, and we have got a DPT table in Oracle. Okay, which of these tables are small in a real world, guys? Would it be the EMP table which is small? So the small table data is what you would put into a distributed cache. So you might be saying that what will happen if both the tables are big enough? Okay, if both the tables are big enough, then there is another technique of doing it that is called as a reduced side join. Okay, perfect, friends. Thank you. So now we are going to see a hands-on that is joins in map radios. So let me go down to my one way is see all of the slides. If I go down to my LMS and open up the slides, uh, it would take a little bit of time. I have got all of these examples already with me in my uh, this one, what you call uh, uh, Windows itself. Instead of going to my uh, uh, virtual machine, so see over here. If I look at advanced map reduce, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? All of the seven things are already there for me in my Windows itself. So if I look at my D drive, customers, Edureka, 10 week schedule, advanced map reduce example, all of them are there. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? So I've got the same folders already available over here. So I'm just going to open it up for me. So I'm not going to look at my VM, okay? I'm not going to look at this. Of course, it is there. I'm just going to minimize it. And I'm going to show you an example of MapReduce join. So let me go down to this uh, join program, okay? And uh, in every uh, program, okay, uh, uh, typically you would need a, a Java code. So let me go down to the LMS and ensure that we are having the same thing. See, this is a join program. See, there is a join problem statement document. There is a TXNS file, customer file, and the Java file. The same thing is what I am having in my folder over here. Let me minimize it and let it come down to my windows. There you see. So I'm just opening up my document from here, friends. Okay? So let me double click on this. So the example that we're going to see over here is a reduced join. The map join, like I told you, would be there in distributed cache. 
So what are the use case? A very common situation in many companies is that the transaction records are kept separate from the customer records, right? There is of course a relationship between the two, that is the transaction ID contains the ID of the customer through which the sale was performed. So we have got two data sets, right? TXNS and CUSTS. So in the Hadoop world, this will be represented by two types of data files, that is your customer ID and the transaction ID. Frequent tasks would require reporting that use the data from both the sources. Let's say I want to find out the number of transactions in the value for a customer, but I don't want it to be based on a anonymous ID because if you do look at only the transaction, all that you will get is the ID. But if you want the name, you will have to look it at the customer table. Okay, so what is the purpose of this uh, example? We are going to see uh, the total number of transactions and some of the transactions by joining the data from uh, two separate uh, files. Okay, we can get the report that we have explained earlier using a reduce side join. So let's go ahead and see that example of the reduce side join. What is the data that I'm having? This is a very small data, but then this is relevant for this example. So if I open up this data in my edit plus, I hardly have got 10 customers. You already have the full data, right? The uh, 9,999 files in the cust example in the upload what I have given. But here I just have got 10 files and let me open up my transactions also and that is also a small file that we are having okay let me look at the word count and this is about 60 records but in the 60 records see these are the customers customer 2 has bought 2 this is again customer 2 let me scroll down that's it so customer 2 let me see if there's any more customer 2 yeah customer 2 has already bought this record customer 2 has got this record I'm just highlighting the records for you so that you know what all things have the customer 2 bought. So if I want to find out the sum of uh, uh, products what the customer 2 has bought, I will have to write a Java code for that, friends. So that's what I am doing it right now. So let me open up my reduce side dot Java program. Let me do a word wrap. So before I even start, guys, since there are two data files, okay, Will I need two mappers or will I need one mapper here, friends? Since I've got two mappers, okay, of course, I mean two files, I would need two mappers. So that's exactly what I'm going to do over here. I'm having a file called as customer mapper, okay? Now, in the customer mapper, what am I interested in? Let me go down to the customer file. I'm interested in the customer ID which is going to be the one that is going to link both of them and I'm interested in the first name of the customer. So the 0th and the first uh, uh, column numbers is what I'm interested in the customer file. That's what I'm doing over here. So in the map logic, what am I doing? First I'm separating all the records based on comma so that I'll get a string array and then I'm picking up part 0 and part 1. So what am I picking? I'm picking up the customer ID and I'm picking up my customer name, friends. Okay? So that's what I'm doing over here. So if you look at the key, key is the customer ID. The value contains cus because both uh, the uh, files have got the customer ID, right? So I should write a logic to understand from where the customer ID has come, from which file the customer ID has come. So that's the reason I am adding it here, cus, slash t means a tab, okay? So what are the key that will be there? The customer ID and then cust and then whatever is the customer name. That is what is there in the cust mapper. Similarly, I will have a transaction mapper. So what am I interested in? I'm interested in the sum of sales. So let me go back to the transaction. Which column am I interested in? Of course, I'm interested in my column number 2, that is 0, 1, and 2. And then I'm interested in column number 3, which will have the individual product value. I'm interested in the customer ID and the individual product value. So if you look at this example, I'm interested in 2 and I'm interested in 3. Of course, in the value, I'm also suffixing my uh, TXNS because uh, what will the shuffler do? Shuffler will ensure that all the values for the similar key will go down to the same reducer. 
So all the customer IDs will go down to the same red user, but I wanted to identify what is the customer name and what is the customer amount, right? So for identifying this, I have kept a key, I have got an identifier called as cust and TXNS, so that I would know from where I have got the value. So I have got two mappers over here. Then comes my reduce logic. So let's look over here and understand what is this reduce logic going to do. So in the reducer code, what am I having? I am creating a name. I am creating a total. Okay? Because that's what I'm interested in. And of course, since we want to have the count and the sum of transactions along with the name, what is my purpose? For every customer, I want to know the total number of transactions and the quantity of the transaction along with the name. So line number 41, 42, 43 are the three things that I would want to output. Then I put it into a loop. Because why I'm getting a values, list of values, right? And then what do I do? I separate all the values by tab. I look at the first value. If the first value contains TXNS, that means uh, for my customer, I will have multiple transactions, right? So what do I do? If the first value contains TXNS, so the guarantee of the framework is that all the similar values will go down to the same reducer. So all the customer will go down to the same reducer. And in the reducer, I would look at what is the uh, customer uh, transaction. And I'll keep on incrementing the count. And along with the count, I will have the value also, right? So see what am I doing? This line, what you see on line number 48, is what is uh, keeping on incrementing the value. Total is 0. And then I pick up every value and look at that plus equal to. That means I'm keeping on adding the values. So now I have got the count of transactions and the total for every customer. Now, if that part contains customer, I will assign the first value of that to the name. So I get the customer name also. Now, how do I put three things uh, uh, as an output from a reducer? You can have only two things, right? So what do I do? I create a string called as transaction, and then I give a tab, and I get my count and the total. So count and total is there in one key. And then I specify my name the name of the customer, and I pass on the value as a string. String internally would have the uh, number of transactions and the total of the transactions. So this is what the final output would come out to. You will see the, for the name of the customer and the number of transactions and the total value of the transaction. So this is what I will be doing it in my reducer logic. Okay. And if you look at my driver code, everything is the same. But then the new thing over here is we typically use to say file input format, right? Instead of file input format, I will use multiple inputs because I have got more than one input. I need to pass both the TXNS and my CUSTS, right, to my program, to my MapReduce program. So I would say the first value that I gave okay would be my uh, customer file for that i will use my text input format class you know that is slash n and uh, the mapper that i will use for the first uh, uh, input is customer mapper then for the second input the formatting will be done by text input format again new line and uh, i will use a transaction mapper for the second input okay for the third input i would put that, that is the path that I need for my file output format. See, I get the job and I get my actual path. And then, what am I doing in line number 74? You know that uh, by default, if the folder is already there, it will not override that folder. Every time I have to give a new name. So if I'm going to run this example multiple times, I am programmatically deleting my output path. So line number 74 is what is uh, getting that uh, path, whatever is there from the file system, and then deleting it. And then I do my job dot wait for completion. If you look at what is my jar, my main program is my jar. You see what is my reducer, I specify my reducer. I specify my mapper over here, and the output key class and output value class. This is the first example, guys. Okay. So this is what is your first example, which is your uh, trans join example, guys. Okay.